<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all if you have a already modified PSP that has been modified using the original Infinity to obtain custom firmware, how you can update it to Infinity 2.0. Now, just as a heads up, you might not need to update to Infinity 2.0, although it is good to do, these are going to be the main benefits of it. First of all, it does have 6.60 and 6.61 support. It now also supports the PSP Street or E1000 models. It preserves the pause restore game feature on the PSP Go, and it also fixes some issues with X and B themes. And another thing I noticed as well is that now you are able to use both custom firmwares properly, permanently, on a PSP 1000 model, while as in the past on the original Infinity, LME didn't work but Pro worked on 1000. I've tested it myself, both custom firmwares work on the 1000 just fine now. So there's a few good reasons to upgrade, but since this is going to be a upgrade, this is going to require a few things. First of all, it's going to require that you already have your modified PSP. If you have a PSP that you modified using my original tutorial that I ended up releasing in 2018 covering Infinity Permanent Custom Firmware, then that would be the modification you have on your current system. Since you'll need a modified PSP, you're also going to need a fully charged battery and you're going to need some storage, unless you are using a PSP Go, which has built-in storage. For your storage, you can just use one of these typical Memory Stick Pro Duo cards, although what I've been using has been these Memory Stick Pro Duo adapters that end up using little micro SD cards up at the top. I am going to have a link to these down below in the description if you'd be interested in fitting your PSP with one of them, as well as a tutorial I have on how to get it all set up on your PSP. As for the actual process here, we're going to remove the custom firmware off of the system, so we're going to safely revert this back to a original firmware, and then we're going to remod the system using Infinity 2.0. It is going to be a lot simpler and easier than Infinity 1, thankfully. Now, just as a quick note, the same two custom firmware variants are the same, so you have either LME or Pro and you can check very quickly which one you're using right now. So if you press the select button when your PSP is turned on, right up here, if it says Pro VSH menu, that means you're using Pro custom firmware. And if you wanna to stick to that, you can stick to it. If it does not say Pro up here, that means you're using LME. So you can use this opportunity to switch custom firmwares or you can stay on the same one. But since this one has been modified with Pro, I'm going to stick to Pro. So now with our PSP here, we do need to hook it up to our PC. You can either use a mini USB cable up top here to hook it up to your PC, or you can end up taking out the storage and hook it up separately. I'm going to be opting for that. So with this, I'm going to take out my micro SD card and move it over to my PC. Once you're over at the PC, you're going to need your storage hooked up to your PC. As you can see right here, this is my PSP memory stick and right up here, you're going to need to download this pack I made, which I'm going to have linked down below in the description. This is just a complete custom firmware Infinity 2.0 pack that I ended up assembling here. So once you download this, it's just a zip file. You just need to right click and extract it to wherever is easily accessible. And now enter this folder. Now, just to make this simple, on the left, this is the extracted folder with all the files we need. And on the right is the actual PSP memory stick or micro SD card itself. So first of all, we're going to need this folder, which is Chrono Switch. This is going to be the downgrader that we'll use. So simply copy this and on your PSP, go to the PSP folder, game, and paste it in here. In this same folder on the memory stick, we need to right click, create a new folder, and in all capital letters, call it update and hit enter. And right here, we need to put our original firmware. So on the folder itself that contains all the downloads, go to the OFW folder, and here you need to pick the OFW for your specific model. So if you have a 1000, 2000, 3000, or street model, you need to use this folder right here. If you have a Go, you need to use this. And I'll show you. In here, there is a 661.pbp file and you simply copy and paste this over into the update directory. 
and once it has been copied over, you will need to rename it to eBoot. And it's the exact same thing for if you're using a PSP Go. If you go in here, there is 661go.pbp. You just need to copy that the same way and rename it to eBoot. But only use this file if you're using a PSP Go. And for any other PSPs, you have to use this file. Once those two files have been copied over, we can right click, eject this safely, and then go back to our PSP. Now that we're back over at the PSP, remember this process is going to remove custom firmware from our system and we're going to revert it back to stock in this process. So make sure you have a fully charged battery and if you want extra protection, you can also plug it into power right here. But what you can do is now go down to memory stick in the game section. And in here, we want to navigate to chrono switch downgrader and run the downgrader. Give it a few seconds to let it do its thing, and once you read the warnings here, you're free to continue if that's what you want to do. So I've already read the warnings, I know what I want to do, but once you agree to all of those warnings and you read them, your screen's going to go black here for a few seconds, and then it's going to be launching the update process itself. So now we have the version 6.61 update entered here, so we can just press start, be sure to agree to these, accept, and press X to begin flashing your system. And at this point, just wait a few minutes, make sure it does not lose power, and this is going to go through the process of reverting us back to a stock 6.61 official firmware. Once this is completed, you can just press the continue button here, mine will be X, and this is going to restart the PSP. Now as you can see, our PSP has restarted, it is working, but if we press the select button here, there is nothing that's going to show up there unfortunately because we are on a stock 6.61 firmware. But this was a way to get us to a clean stock firmware. So with this, what you can do is go into here, press the triangle button, Go down and you can now delete the 6.61 update file as well as the chrono switch downgrader. Now with those deleted, just go back and we're going to have to take our memory stick or our micro SD card, whatever we're using, and hook that back up to our PC to transfer a few more files. So back at the PC, we have the same setup as before. To the left, this is the folder that you've downloaded, and to the right, this is going to be my PSP's storage. So we're going to need a few different things for this. First of all, we're going to need to go into our Infinity folder, and there's going to be two folders here. One of them is Standard, and one of them is PSP Go. And this is very simple. If you do not have a PSP Go, you use Standard. If you have a PSP Go, you use PSP Go. Since I have a PSP 3000, I'm going to go into standard, and we need this eboot.pbp file. So on your PSP storage, go into PSP, game, create a new folder again, all uppercase, and call it update. And inside of this update folder, you want to copy in the respective infinity eboot.pbp that's going to work on your system. Next up, we need to choose our custom firmware. So you can come up to the CFW folder, and in here, you can either choose LME or you can choose Pro. Because the system previously had Pro, I'm going to stick to Pro. So you can go in here, grab both of these folders, copy them out, and on the root of your PSP storage, you just want to right click and paste. And if you're going to use LME, you can simply go in here and take all the folders themselves. You don't need the text files, but take all the folders and copy them and then paste them into the root of your PSP's storage. So now with all that copied over, we can simply right click, eject this, and go back to our PSP one last time. Over at your PSP, go down to the memory stick section in game, enter this, and we need to go into Infinity 2. Once Infinity 2 comes up, just press X, wait a few seconds, and press X again to reboot. And the first half of Infinity's setup is now complete. So wait for your system to reboot. Once it successfully restarts, you can navigate down back over to Memory Stick. And now go over to your custom firmware. And if you are going to be installing Pro, you'll need to run the update. 
If you are installing LME, you'll need to run the installer. But regardless of which firmware you're going to be installing, go ahead and find the file you need, mine is going to be update in this case, and open it. Once this comes up, press X to let it install. And as you can see, it's done. So we can press X again to let it restart into our custom firmware. Now for our final step in this process, we just need to go back down to memory stick one last time for the install, open up Infinity 2. Navigate to the left, and here you need to select which custom firmware you have installed, and it has to be the one you have currently installed. So because I have Pro, I'm going to select this and just highlight it, press the X button so you have a asterisk over it, and then press right, press home, and press the X button to exit. Now our PSP has restarted. And at this point here, just to make sure this has permanent custom firmware, I'm going to hold up on the power. So this is now going to power down completely. And for our true test, I'm going to turn it on. So this is the PSP just coming on from boot. Well, cold boot. As you can see, it's booting up just fine. And you can go over to select. And as you can see, Pro VSH menu or your LME VSH menu will now pop up. To further confirm this, you can also go over to System Settings, System Information, and right there under the system software, as you can see, I have 6.61 Pro-C Infinity. So that is it. Our system has been remodified and upgraded to Infinity 2.0. So that's about all you need to do at this point. If you want to, you can go into your memory stick, and if you so choose, you can delete the Infinity 2 as well as the custom firmware files because we don't really need them at this point, but that's totally up to you. So congratulations, you should have now at this point successfully remodified your system, but now be updated from Infinity 1 to Infinity 2. Anyways, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, a like would very much be appreciated. If you dislike it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.